So I'm going to uh, now do my presentation. Um, so I'm going to talk about uh, an implementation study of, of, a, of a, uh, a neuromodulation intervention. Uh, not, MindTech doesn't just do digital mental health. It also look, is involved with uh, neuromodulation. And neuromodulation are electrical and magnetic treatments um, which uh, have yet to be really take off in, in terms of, uh, of, of the NHS. Um, this particular one is, we fo is focused on generalised anxiety <coughs> disorder, which is a very common problem and has a point prevalence of over 4% in the UK population. Um, it's one of the two really common problems that you see in improving access to psychological treatment services in England. And, uh, it's usually treated in adults by cognitive behaviour therapy, antidepressants, or sometimes more addictive medications such as benzodiazepines. Importantly, for the, in terms of understanding this study, the IOC services are roughly paid, it's a little bit more complicated than this, but roughly paid for activity and 50% for achieving remission. So this is a service that's actually paid for getting results. Something that I would wish that more NHS services were actually challenged to do. But instead, most NHS services are paid on a block contract. Um, Alpha Stem is cranial electro, uh, electrotherapy stimulator. It's a company that, uh, if you want to see more about it, the company has a stand here. It's a microcurrent company. Uh, it develops a, a low current of 100 to 500 microamperes frequency. As you can see, one wears it on your belt or, or on your person and has ear clip electrodes. And you, you wear it for 20 minutes uh, or up to 60 minutes, depending on the, uh, uh, your response. And you can do this while you're just at home, just doing your everyday activities. I imagine not many people would want to take it outside of the home, but you could if you wished. Um, the mechanism of action is not fully understood, but the idea is the microcurrent stimulates the brainstem, and uh, this seems to have cortical deactivation and fRMI. It changes um, out the EEG functioning. Uh, as expected, it would increase alpha, which is supposed to be associated with relaxation and alertness. And there are changes in, in um, cerebral spinal fluid and plasma blood levels, similar to what one would see with, with medication treatment for for um, anxiety. So previous clinical evidence, there was a double-blind sham-controlled, randomised controlled trial, where, where, which was um, carried out in 115 US volunteers with primary anxiety disorder. Um, now, the, the, the issue, why the, current, why, the, why the company came to us in MindTech to help them <coughs> was that they were seeking NICE accreditation for the, for the product. And NICE had told them that we need to, you need to provide evidence of trials and studies in an NHS setting, not just in volunteers in other countries. So this is the starting point. And you need to provide health economics evidence, as several people have pointed out. There are, in fact, five other randomized controlled trials. So there are plenty of randomized controlled trials. Some of them, in my view, are not the best quality trials that I've ever seen, but nevertheless, they exist. So this wasn't to do with doing a trial. One of the things, the aims of the study was in a UK NHS setting, um, and in this case there were two IAP services in Leicestershire, explore the clinical and cost effectiveness in generalised anxiety disorder. In particular, there are, there are examples of treatments in the NHS, antidepressant drugs would be a good example of it, where the effects in real life are nowhere near the size in... in, in, in um, in clinical practice. So specifically, what proportion of patients reach the clinical threshold for remission, which is actually what, people, what the services are paid for, reliable improvement, or both, which is recovery. What I'm not going to show you, because the, the work has not been completed yet, is, is the economic evaluation. But you can get a sense of what that's likely to show just from this data. So inclusion-exclusion criteria, score of eight or more on, on uh, GAD7. They'd already had low-intensity treatment and were waiting for high-intensity psychological treatment. That's an individual face-to-face -face CBT. 
or other secondary care mental health intervention. The issue here is that IAT services cannot manage the capacity. They do not have the capacity and have increasing and expanding waiting lists for individual CBTs. This is a huge problem in terms of service delivery and arguably more of a problem than the cost. So they, these patients wouldn't have a substance use disorder or, or other significant mental disorders. They don't require urgent care. If they're female, they're not known to be pregnant. And they had to give written informed consent and agree to return the equipment. Uh, a flow through the study, 161 started. And as you can see, there's the flow through the study. 79% completed at least six weeks treatment with alpha stim. 28% had eventually had phase three psychological treatment. And only two preferred to have it rather than the alpha stim of people that were approached. There were withdrawals, 28% withdrew from the study. We don't know for the majority of them why, but interestingly, they were to do with not finding time, no improvement, felt better, and some side effects, but very few side effects. Um, so th these, are the these are the main results. 118 women, so this is would be expected in this particular condition, 150 were white British, 93%, which is, a bit disappointing in Leicestershire, which is an area where one would exceed higher BME communities, and we did try to recruit from the city of Leicester in particular, um, and so there might be an issue about that. Um, the, a lot of people were employed or in students. There were some retired people, but not many. Um, but what it was important was the baseline general anxiety, depression, JAD7 score was way above the minimum threshold at 15.6. So this is quite a seriously ill group. Um, now, 73, 45.3% achieved remission, but 63.4% really had a significant clinically important uh, effect. And 44% achieved recovery. Remission and recovery are not very different from each other because of the si just how bad they were in the first place, how severe they were. There was nobody who showed a, a five-point worsening of their anxiety symptoms, which is important. So if you were to compare this to uh, individual CBT, um, eight sessions or more, then you would find 49.3% from the IAP data evaluations would have improved and 6.6% would have deteriorated. So the important thing for the uh, IAP services is how many people would improve with step two, the low intensity treatment, how many people would improve with this, and how many people would improve with step three. Making various assumptions, that would be between 65 and 78 percent. What they, they must achieve 51 percent. So this is important. <clears throat> so we didn't just measure anxiety. There were similar scores for PHQ-9. Note how the, sc the, the scores improve very quickly, which is another great advantage of this treatment, and were sustained even though the treatment was finished. There were improvements with work and social adjustment, there were improvements with the, uh, the quality of life measure and, uh, and, and insomnia. So in routine NHS services for IAT, alpha stim was seen to be accepted and well tolerated. Um, there were quick, reasonably quick clinical effects and they were sustained over time. I have had a look at the 24-week data and they do show they're sus largely sustained for that length of time as well. Uh, quite a good proportion of people improved. The, those that didn't were those who mostly dropped out of treatment. We don't know entirely what those, we don't know all the reasons for that. Uh, but interestingly, some dropped out because they didn't improve improved, some, improved, some dropped out because they had improved. And this issue of time, I think, is about uh, an issue of explaining things to people. And importantly, and this is the most important thing, only 28% of people required step three psychological treatment. So both of the services have now bought this product because it just, makes, it just allows them to provide a sustainable service. And I think that's probably the most important thing about the whole study. Thank you.